You're listening to the Culips English podcast. To download the study guide for this episode, which includes the transcript, detailed vocabulary explanations, real-world examples, and a quiz, visit our website culips.com. C U L I P S dot com. Hey, everybody. My name is Andrew. And I'm Suzanne. And you're listening to Culips. Hey, Suzanne. Hi, Andrew. How are you? <laughs> I am doing very well. How are you? I'm doing well. I just baked some delicious banana nut muffins. Sounds delicious. They're vegan too. Yeah, that's one of the cool things about cooking with bananas, or I should say, baking with bananas. Yeah, is that you can often turn it into a vegan recipe because the bananas are so soft and yes, and and、uh, you and don't sweet. need to put the butter inside. Yeah, there was no butter, no、uh, just some vegetable oil, coconut oil, and、mm. flax seed,、uh, flax seeds crushed up, which help. Like it, like an egg, kind of keep it together. So yeah, all vegan. What kind of nuts did you put inside? I put walnuts in、Ooh. in the banana bread. Good choice. Yeah, <laughs> really. You know what? I couldn't find my pan, so I made muffins instead. <laughs> <laughs> Classic move. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> Suzanne, today we are back with another Real Talk episode, and Real、awesome. Talk is our series where we teach all of our listeners the English expressions that they need to know for real world situations. And today we have a topic that has been requested many times by many different listeners, and that's how to talk about movies. Now. This topic is really big, and it would be impossible for us to cover talking about the many different facets of movies in just one episode. So、yeah. I thought we'd narrow our focus a little bit, and today we'll teach our listeners how to talk about movies that they like. Okay, we'll focus just on movies that we like. But before we get into the Nitty gritty of today's topic. I do want to remind everyone that the best way to study with this episode is with our study guide, and there's lots of really great stuff inside the guide, like a transcript, detailed vocabulary explanations, some of the key language that you'll hear in today's episode. There are also real life examples, a comprehension quiz. Some prompts that you can use for journaling or for speaking practice. There's tons of good stuff in the guide, so just visit our website, culips.com, and you can give it a download. Awesome. Our plan for today is that we're going to learn how to talk about movies that you like, which isn't always easy. Suzanne, do you have a favorite movie? Hmm, that's a hard one, Andrew. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Or can you think of a movie that you really like? One of my favorite movies was Goodfellas. That was a that's like a classic, fun, awful. <laughs> movie like <laughs> just you know funny but heartbreaking and you know like mafia hijinks. I really like superhero movies like Wonder Woman. I really loved Wonder Woman.、It、was、okay. really great to see a woman being super strong and fierce on screen. That was great. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I haven't seen either of those movies, to be honest with you. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
Goodfellas or Wonder Woman, so I can't add much to the conversation. But I know those are two really popular <laughs> movies, a classic and also a newer one. I also, I, I have to say, I also really like um, Legally Blonde, which I know, I know people are going to laugh at me about. I know, but <laughs> I'm kind of the same age as Reese Witherspoon, maybe. So okay. I kind of grew up with her in her movies, and I really liked. I just think she's so funny. So yeah, I really like her. <laughs> what about you, Andrew? What's your favorite or some of your favorite movies yeah well you know it's funny Suzanne we were talking a little bit off air before we started recording this episode and we were saying that both of us don't watch movies as often these days as in the past because TV is so good these days I know and so TV is very good and also since I'm living in Korea and trying to learn Korean, I watch a lot more Korean movies these days. Oh, nice. So when I think about English movies, I have to really go back in time. (laughs) (laughs) And and I'm not the best person to talk to about newer English movies, but one of my favorite directors of all time is Wes Anderson. Oh, yeah. And I... I adore almost all of his movies. Yeah, I forgot about those movies. Those are so good. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but in particular, The Royal Tenenbaums yeah. is one of my favorite movies of all time. It's just the total package. The acting is amazing. The scenery and the sets are just so unique and particular to Wes Anderson's directing style. Yes. The cinematography is good. The soundtrack is unbelievable. It's it's the total package, like I said. You laugh, you cry. (laughs) It's all there. So definitely, I would say The Royal Tenenbaums is one of my favorite movies of all time. And I would highly recommend it to any of our listeners who haven't seen that movie before. Yeah, that's it's a really funny, really good movie. (laughs) So today we're going to first listen to an example conversation about movies and then after we listen to it we'll go back and take a closer look at it and break it down and look at all of the expressions that we heard and we'll also teach you some other useful vocabulary that's related to talking about movies that you like perfect so let's get started by listening to that first example conversation I watched the newest Spider-Man movie last night. Have you seen it? Is that the animated one? Yeah, it's called Into the Spider-Verse. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet, but I really want to. How was it? It was incredible. Yeah? Absolutely. It's a must-see. The story was entertaining from top to bottom, and the animation was out of this world. That's good to hear. You know, I thought the Spider-Man series was getting a little bit stale, so I'm glad they managed to breathe some new life into the franchise. I totally agree. Anyway, if you get the chance, make sure to check this one out. I think you'll love it. Okay, Suzanne, so in that example, we heard two friends talk about the newest Spider-Man movie, Into the Spider-Verse, and... Yeah. Actually, I think this was one of the last movies that I saw in the theater in English. It came out maybe, I want to say, six months ago or a year ago. Yeah, I don't think I ever saw this one. Yeah. I totally agree with the character in this example, though. It was really an impressive movie. The animation was next level. Wow. I got to check this out. <laughs> okay, so let's break down this example yeah. conversation a little bit. And the first thing that we should talk about is how to answer this question. How was it? Because when you're talking about a movie or a TV show and somebody asks you how it was, very common question, right? How was it? Mm -hmm. How can we answer this question to talk about something that we like, a movie or a TV show that we like? 
Yeah, I mean, we have these great adjectives, you know. They're a little broad, but they're really fitting, too. We can say it was amazing, it was incredible, right? Or, you know, like if it's more of a maybe a sweeter film, something that's a little more pulling at the heartstrings, we can say it was heartbreaking or heartwarming, right? Now, Suzanne, when I talk to a lot of my students who are mostly Korean, they mm -hmm. will say something like, oh, how was your weekend? And they'll answer, it was great. I watched a movie. I say, oh, really? How was it? And they'll say, I felt touched. <sighs> I, I don't know if this is a good way to answer this question. How does it feel to you if you say, I felt touched when somebody asks you, how was it? You can understand that they maybe uh, felt emotion, but it's mm -hmm. confusing. It's not something that you would normally use uh, to describe right. a movie. It's very rare that we would say this <laughs> sentence. Yeah. <laughs> In any situation, I felt touched. So what's a better way? If you watch a movie and, you know, it's one of those movies that makes you have an emotional reaction, perhaps it's, it's heartwarming. Um, how could you describe that kind of movie? I guess heartwarming is a good word yeah. to use, isn't it? I think heartwarming or like... You know, you could, if you wanted to use the word touching, you could say it was a very touching film. You wouldn't say, I felt touched, but you can turn that around and say, like, the, you know, the film was very touching. It's just not a word we use very often. Yeah, I never use the word touching. Yeah. I would say it was sad yeah. or it was a really emotional film. Yeah, or moving. Uh, you can or say moving. it was really moving. It was moving. moving, yes. If it's more of a serious film. I think that it's best to use more specific adjectives, you know? Mm -hmm. Things, something like, it was a quiet film, it was more of a sensitive film that brought out a lot of emotion. Uh, that kind of thing is more interesting to hear than just... It was an emotional movie or something. You know, sometimes like emotional how? Was it funny? Was it right. sad? So, yeah, I think being more specific is, is good. Always better, for sure. Yeah. So if we go back to the example, we heard the expression, the story was entertaining from top to bottom. Story yes. was entertaining from top to bottom. Yeah, I like that. I like that phrase. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. what does it mean exactly from top to bottom? Because a movie doesn't have a top and it doesn't have a bottom. <laughs> yeah. Well, it just means from start to finish, right? Exactly. From start to yeah. finish. Exactly. Because it's funny you say that, but when you're filming a scene, for mm -hmm. example, you do say, let's take it from the top. Like you, Oh, that's you do, true refer to, to the beginning of something in film speak as the top of the scene. Good point. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so it's like it, it was like really fun and exciting all the way through, right? It held your attention the whole time. And this is really important these days because we're constantly distracted, right? We have these amazing phones in our pocket that are so interesting <laughs> and so even when I'm watching a movie, it's common for me to check my phone several times. But if I don't do that and the movie is really engaging and interesting the whole time, then that is something special. That's something that I want to share with my friends. Like, yeah. oh, this one was so good. I was focused on the movie the whole time. I didn't even get distracted. So it's a good expression to use in that situation. And there's a couple other expressions that we could say for this context. Like, yeah. I couldn't look away. I couldn't look away. I couldn't look away. Yeah. This is usually used in like action or like even like mystery suspense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, suspense movie. I couldn't look like away. I couldn't look away. Yeah. Those where you're on the edge of your seat, right? Yes, exactly. To be on the edge of your seat, you're anticipating 
what's yeah. happening next and you're really just dialed in to the story. You're completely focused on the story. Yes. You could also say that a movie is really captivating, right? If if the same situation occurs where you're really focused on the story and what's happening in the movie, you could say it was really captivating. Captivating. Yeah. Or even riveting. I've heard people say riveting. that word too. <laughs> it was riveting. It was riveting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and all of these expressions are used to talk about focusing on the movie and not being distracted by other things. Yeah. Or the movie really holding your attention. Yes, exactly. And we could use all of these to talk about a TV show as well. Totally. I'm thinking Game of Thrones. Probably, I'd say, the hottest <laughs> TV show around these days. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, I fell off the Game of Thrones <gasps> bandwagon back in like what? season two. <laughs> what? <laughs> so I got Andrew. a lot of catching up to do. Don't don't spoil I'm it not, for me, okay? Suzanne, I won't. I'm, it's okay. I'm like five years behind here. <laughs> it's, it's it's I won't say a word. <laughs> okay. <laughs> The next expression that we heard uh, was about the animation, right? It was the animation was out of this world, out of this world. What, what exactly does that mean, out of this world? Yeah, when something is out of this world, it's really, really good. You know, it, it's almost like it's better than anything that you could find on Earth. You would have to go to a special alien planet to find something <laughs> as as good as this. A, a yes. more advanced society, perhaps. On a completely different plane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if something is out of this world, it's really, really good. And so the character in the example said the animation was out of this world. And you could use out of this world to describe any specific feature of the movie, right? The story was out of this world, or the acting was out of this world, the soundtrack was out of this world. So any specific element in the movie that you really thought was special, you can describe by using this expression, out of this world. There's some other similar expressions that you might hear as well too, like it was genius, right? The acting was genius. The soundtrack was genius. Yes. Or like the animation was mind-blowing. Mind-blowing. All of these kind of mean the same thing. Yeah. Essentially, really, really fantastic, right? Out of this world, mind-blowing, genius. So, Suzanne, these are pretty much all of the ways that we can talk about movies that we like, but... Mm -hmm. In the example, we did hear a couple of other interesting expressions that I thought we should touch on yeah. quickly. And one of those was that the Spider-Man series was getting a bit stale. Okay, The character yeah. in the example said, uh, I'm glad to hear that the newest Spider-Man movie was good because I thought that the series was getting a bit stale. So what does yeah. stale mean? Well, in its literal definition is when something is getting old and not very good anymore. Maybe it's gross and you don't really want to eat like stale bread, right? It's like kind of stiff and not it's very not fresh flavorful. anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I think exactly. that's the classic example, right? Stale yeah. bread, the bread yeah. that's like four days old and hard as a rock. Exactly. And so in, in the uh, example, when, when we're talking about films um, or, you know, a, a TV show or a comic book or something, we're saying that maybe the storyline, right? Like those, those movies were getting really boring and just unoriginal and um, uneventful. It wasn't exciting anymore. It wasn't fresh. Mm -hmm. So, Yeah getting a bit stale like a three-day loaf of bread <laughs> <laughs> and we often hear this expression used to describe movies that have many sequels or follow-ups yeah that's true spider-man's a great example how many spider-man movies are there 
now. Lots and all of the superhero movies, the different um, series that there are, you know, we could say, ah, oh, they're getting a little bit stale. They're a little bit boring to watch. Yeah. Um, but in the example, we heard one of the speakers say that um, they breathed new life into the franchise. They breathed new life into the Spider-Man franchise. Yeah. So here franchise means series. All right. We talk about a movie franchise as being a series of movies like the Star Wars franchise or the Lord of the Rings franchise. Yeah. It's just meaning a group of yep. connected movies. Exactly. Like the Avengers. <laughs> mm, yeah. A topical selection. <laughs> Isn't that coming out soon? I think it just came out yesterday in Korea, oh. where I am living. So oh my it's... <laughs> gosh, I have to go see that next week. <laughs> Got to go see it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and to breathe new life into something means to save it or revive it, right? Yeah, exactly. Bring it back. You could think of maybe somebody that's choking or drowning and you provide CPR on that person and bring them back to life, right? You're breathing new life into their lungs, yeah. and we can use this image to talk about saving a movie series or a movie franchise. Yeah, I think that kind of happened with Star Wars, right? A little bit, like... Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They bring in new characters, they bring in a little bit of a... maybe a new planet or something, a new set... A uh, new atmosphere, and suddenly we breathe new life into a, a franchise. So, yeah. Exactly. Well, Suzanne, I think that about brings us to the end of today's episode and i want to thank all of our listeners for listening and we hope that you learned about some new ways to talk about movies that you like there's lots and lots of good expressions here in this episode absolutely and don't forget that our website is culips.com and you can get the transcript of this episode and the study guide with practice exercises at Culips.com. We're also on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter. <laughs> Everywhere. And I think we're most active probably on Instagram and YouTube these days. Uh, so if you would like to follow us, just visit your favorite social media sites and search for the Culips English Podcast and you'll be sure to find us. Yeah. And we'll be back soon with a brand new episode. Sounds good. We'll talk to you then, everyone. Bye. All right, guys. Bye.